Well, good evening to all of you. It's fantastic to have so many people online, and uh, we've always had a long-standing partnership with uh, Just Invest, so it's great to be actually doing something with them. For those of you who don't know, my name is Scott Picken. I'm the founder and chairman of IPS and the senior managing partner of Wealth Migrate. I've worked with uh, Johan and Bota at Just Invest since, well, I met them first in about 2004, actually. Um, and we've had a very long-standing relationship. And although they are excellent at helping people invest in local investment opportunities in South Africa, what we've done, and along with uh, IMD, Jakob Moritz, we built a relationship with Johan and Bota. And we said, listen, guys, it's great to have great investments locally. But it's equally as important to have international investments. And so tonight we're going to be looking at offshore investment, the pros and cons of it. And for those of you interested, we can also compare the pros and cons to investing locally. Now, just before I get started, it's very, very important on a webinar to be able to interact. And the more questions you actually ask me, the more I will be able to, to see and I'll be able to understand what it is you're looking to achieve and then you'll ultimately get a lot more out of it. So. Do me a favor and just type in the question box. You'll see it up in the top right corner. Just type in where you're from. I basically just want to see if everyone knows where the question box is. And I'm also just interested to see where everyone's from. So, okay, so we've got uh, someone from Bracken, Melville. Where else is everyone from? Great, I can see that coming through. Johannesburg, so there's quite a few people up from Johannesburg. That's very interesting. Okay, so basically I can see that people know where that is, so that's absolutely fantastic. Now, with regards to why we're here tonight, the most important thing in terms of what we're doing and why we're here and what, we, what we're trying to achieve is it really comes down to a quote that I heard from Nelson Mandela. And Nelson Mandela said, money won't create success, the freedom to make it will. Now, personally, I actually believe it's about taking it to another level because it's not just about making money. It's all about our global wealth, because our global wealth will ultimately determine our freedom. Our global wealth will determine where we can send our kids to school, where we can send our kids to university, where we can go on holidays, and ultimately where we want to live in the world. Now, whether you love South Africa or not is irrelevant. I'm absolutely passionate about South Africa, and I love living in South Africa, but I want my global wealth to not only remain stagnant, but to increase and certainly not to decline so that I have the freedom going forward. So we believe that it's all about what Nelson Mandela says, but taking it to another level. Now, I want to play a little game and show you what I mean here. Who here knows what CPI stands for? What does CPI stand for and how do they calculate it? Anyone? What is CPI? Just, just type it in. What does CPI stand for? Okay, so I can see a couple of people know exactly what it is. Consumer Price Index, that's exactly right. And interestingly enough, how they, how they basically calculate it is that they take 20 goods, a basket of goods, 20 of them, every single month, and they work out the price, and then they see whether the prices are going up or down. Now, as a matter of interest, what we decided was very important was that one needed to calculate what the Global Wealth Index was, because it's all good and well knowing what, how our wealth is changing in South Africa. But what we actually need to know is how our wealth is changing globally. And so we came up with the Global Wealth Index, and effectively it's made up of five different things. It's a family holiday to Disney World, so mom and dad and two kids. A family holiday to Val d'Isere. I've had the privilege of skiing in uh, many of the European resorts, and Val d'Isere in France is one of my favorites. It's sending your kid to a private school in Churchy, uh, sorry, in Brisbane called Churchy. So that's similar to a Bishop's or a St. Stithian's in Johannesburg or a Kersney or a Hilton. In, in Durban, and it's one of the better private schools in Brisbane in Australia. Then Harvard, so Harvard year tuition. Now again, your children might, necessarily not, might not necessarily want to go to Harvard, but the bottom line is you certainly want to have the ability, should they say they want to go to Harvard. And then lastly, immigration. You know, a lot of people don't know this, but you can actually buy your way in to Australia. You can buy your way into America. And so what is that amount and how is it actually calculated? So let's play a little game here. In 1983, how much money do you think it would have cost in U.S. dollar terms for a mom and dad and two kids to go to Disney World for a week? So how much would it have cost a mom and dad and two kids to go to Disney World for a week in 1983? 
Okay, the answer is $715. What about the rand? So in 1983, if I had one pound, how many rands would I get for it? So in 1983, if I had one pound, how many rands would I get for it? Would the rand be stronger or was it weaker than the pound? Now, very interesting enough, you would have actually got 82 cents. So 82 cents, if you had one pound, you would have had 82 cents. So the rand was actually stronger than the pound in 1983. What about 1993? If you had one US dollar, how many rands would you have got? Now, in 1993, for one dollar, you would have got three rand and seven cents. And then the last two questions, this year, how much does it cost to send your kid, not a boarding school, just a day scholar school, to the best, one of the best private schools in Brisbane? How much do you think it would cost? And the answer is 39356 So basically $40,000 or just short of 400,000 Rand. And then finally, how much does it cost? And it has gone up quite a lot in the last couple of years. But how much does it cost to actually buy your way into Australia? And the answer is 1.5 million Australian dollars. And what does that actually mean to us as South Africans? Well, interestingly enough, our global wealth has declined by 77% every single year for the last 30 years. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when I did this research for our book, Property Going Global, I was astounded. We did this research about six weeks ago, and I could not believe. I mean, we all know that the RAND is devaluing, and we all know that it's getting more expensive to buy stuff in first world countries. But I never realized the impact on a yearly basis over the last 30 years in terms of our global wealth. Now, some people say to me, yeah, but Scott, that's a straight line graph. What is the compound effect? Well, the compound effect is actually 29.5% year on year. So unless you're doing something, your wealth is devaluing at a rate of 29.5% year on year based on a 30-year trend in terms of where we actually are. Now, there's two reasons for it. The first reason is that obviously prices in first world countries are going up. But equally so, the rand is devalued. And when one looks at a graph over the last 23 years, you can see here back to 1990 through to today, and the rand has fluctuated up and down, up and down. But the long-term trend line, the red line, actually shows that over the last 23 years, the rand is devalued by 5.6%. Actually, over the last 30 years, the rand is devalued by over 6%. Now, what's absolutely fascinating is a lot of people saying to me, yeah, but I can do much better on my investing in South Africa. And I always say, you're probably right. But if you're comparing an apple with an apple, one has to take into account that 5.6 to 6% variance if one's taking a more than five-year viewpoint because that's long-term trends in terms of what the RAND is doing against the US dollar and other major first world country currencies. Now, we only work with the best. We work with a guy called James Painter. I've been working with him since 2005. And since I've been working with him, he basically forecasts the RAND. He does it very similar to weather patterns. So in the same way that the weatherman is not 100% sure in terms of what is going to happen, they can pretty much tell you whether tomorrow is going to be sunny or rainy. Well, that's exactly what James does. And very interestingly enough, in March, he, he did a, a, a live presentation to 202 of our investors. The RAND was at 888 at the time in March this year. And he said that within three months, the RAND will actually go to over 10 RAND to the US dollar. And I said, what is the probability of that happening? And he said, it's more than 90%. And less than three months later, the RAND went over 10 RAND to the dollar. In fact, it went as high as 1030. And you know that of 202 clients that were in that live event, only 100 of them, 180 of them took action. Sorry, 22 of them took action. 180 of them did nothing. One lady actually put 4 million rand in a foreign trading account, then got gold feet and took it out. And in the space of 10 days, lost over 400,000 rand. Now, the question is, if you're dealing with someone that has a predictability and an accuracy since 2005 of over 80%, is it better to follow what he's telling us than to just have gut feel decisions? Well, I've been using him since 2005. And I would highly recommend, rather than just having a gut feel, you actually work with someone that has an accuracy rate of over 80%.
And interestingly enough, he, he's got a report. He's got today, the next couple of days, the next couple of weeks, the next couple of months, and then the next couple of years. Now, I'm not going to go into all the details in terms of the next couple of days, the next couple of weeks. But he does say that now is a very good time to be buying the U.S. dollar. And interestingly enough, in the next couple of months, he expects it to slide to about 1250 to the U.S. dollar. And in the next couple of years, he expects it to go in a target range of between 14 to 21 to the U.S. dollar. Now, it's currently sitting at about 10 rand to the U.S. dollar. He's expecting it to go between 14 and 21 to the U.S. dollar. And to be honest, when I said, what is the probability of that? He said it's more than 90 percent. So just like back in March, when he gave people a forecast as to what's going to happen and then it transpired, he continues to give us a forecast. So if you're interested in this RAND report, please just type in Asset Manager RAND report. So just type in Asset Manager RAND report, and then we will be able to send you that RAND report in terms of what it is and, and how it is and where the RAND is going. But the question is, what do you do? Now, you're not supposed to be able to see all these numbers in terms of on the screen. But what I did for our clients about six weeks ago is, is I looked at a bunch of scenarios because it's all good and well to look back by 30 years. But what you've got to do is you've got to take those long-term trends and you've got to extrapolate forward. And I wanted to know where I would be in 30 years based on five different trends. Now, I'm not going to bore you with all the, all the numbers here, but I wanted to show you the graph. So this graph, basically, the bottom blue line, shows you that if you left your money in the bank in South Africa and you started with a million rand today, in 30 years' time, so in 2043, you would have about 500,000, sorry, about 270,000 U.S. dollars. Now, why is it in U.S. dollars? Well, I believe your net worth should only be calculated in first world currencies. So your net asset value should be calculated in first world currencies. So your million rand in 30 years will be worth $270,000. If you bought a good South African house for a million rand, your net asset value would be about $700,000. Now, interestingly enough, a good South African house, I don't know if you know the long-term trends, but it's an 8% net yield and a 30% capital, um, sorry, it's an 8% net yield and a 12% capital growth. So that's the 30-year trend, 12% capital growth, and 8% net yield. And that's what we worked on for a good South African house. If you said to me that the, the rand is weak against the dollar now, and I'm going to wait a year, and then in a year's time, I think that the rand is going to recover to 9 rand to the dollar, and then I'm going to buy property. Well, interestingly enough, if you did that, your net asset value would be over $2 million in, in 2043. However, if you said, no, I'm going to buy a good quality asset today, and I'm going to benefit from the passive income for the next 12 months, even if it's 10 rand to the dollar, and even if the rand was to recover to 9 rand to the dollar in a year, do you know that your net asset value would still be 2.2 million in 30 years' time, or more than 10% because of the compound interest? And both of those are if you buy cash. If you buy with gearing or with finance at only a 50% loan to value, your net asset value will actually be over 4 million if you buy a good American property. And the difference in terms of where you are is the difference between leaving your money in the bank in South Africa is 1,634%. And the difference between a good South African property and a good American property is 439%. Now, why is that relevant? Well, 77%, which is the amount that we are declining every single year, times by 30 years, is roughly 2,300%. If you divide that by 439%, it equates to 5.2 houses. So basically, in terms of our, our, our global wealth, all that we have to do to stop the degradation of our wealth is to own 5.2, or let's, for argument's sake, say six, first world assets that earn a first world income, and we will effectively offset the problems with regards to the global wealth and what is happening in terms of RAND. Now, some people say to me, you know, okay, Scott, that's all great, but what's your experience? Well, it's very interesting. I studied uh, construction management at university. I went across to London, and I worked for an Irish property developer for five years. But while I was in London, at the age of 22, I bought my first house back in South Africa. It was a five-bedroom house in Rondebosch, and our intention was to develop it. It had R4 zoning. So while it was being going through planning and everything else, we rented it out. 
And my brother was a doctor or was studying to be a doctor at UCT. And so I said, oh, put, can't you just manage this property for me? I'm in London. There's nothing I can do. And, you know, I'll give you a case of beer every month. And it worked like a charm until the guy stopped paying. I phoned my brother up and said, listen, but can you go and sort it out? And he said, but I'm a doctor, not a debt collector. So that was the first time I realized long distance how important it was to have great property managers. We eventually knocked that house down and we built six townhouses. And you can actually see the six townhouses that we built here in Rondebosch. We bought, we bought our first house in London in 2002. And actually, it was this council house here. It's five minutes from Wimbledon Station. Now, at the time, and probably still the case, a lot of the British people want to buy period houses. Now, a period house cost on this type of property another 50 or 60,000 pounds, which was another 10 or 20%. And basically, it didn't affect the yield at all because a professional share raise far more, it, it, it has, has far more, their concerns and their needs are far more about the inside of the house. So does it have a power shower? Does it have internet? Does it have, you know, um, wireless and, uh, and, and, um, and DSTV, et cetera, et cetera. And the fact that we were on the screen, people absolutely loved it. They could play touch and soccer and, and volleyball, et cetera. And it was five minutes walk from Wimbledon station. But interestingly enough, in September the 11th, uh, we just had September the 11th, and a lot of people were saying to me, yeah, but Scott, England's going to war with Afghanistan, and oil prices are going to go up, and inflation's going to go up, and interest rates are going to go up. I said, that's fine. I understand this. But we're going to put a conservatory on for 20,000 pounds. That's going to allow us to turn a three-bedroom house into a five-bedroom house, which will allow us to increase our income stream, because every property, every bedroom in London, you can actually rent out. So we can have more than a thousand pounds passive net income, which basically it was when I learned a very important principle that what people often get analysis paralysis. We get caught up in, is the world going up? Is the world going down? Is the economy going up? Is it going down? Is the American government falling apart? Is it not? Is, uh, is the quantity of easing going to have an impact? At the end of the line, sometimes you've just got to look at the intrinsic value of the asset and the income potential of the asset. And if you can just understand and manage those risks, then it gives you a huge amount of comfort in terms of riding through the different scenarios that can transpire. So that was our first house in London at the age of 24. Then we built this house back in Cape Town again while living in London. It was on Atlantic Beach. It's at the end of the first hole at Atlantic Beach. It had beautiful views of Table Mountain and out over the coast and the ocean. And again, it was our dream home back in South Africa. But unfortunately, in 2007, I had to sell that house. And the reason I had to sell it was that the quality was terrible. When you try and do something long distance, unless you have the best partners on the ground, you are pretty much guaranteed to fail. It's not a question of if you'll fail. It's a question of you will fail. And I learned this. Oh, even though I employed a project manager, I was in London. I come from a building and development background. And yet I couldn't manage the project long distance. And they built 50% over budget and eight months late. And the quality, as I said to you, was so bad that we ended up selling the house. So that was when I decided back in 2004 that whenever I do long distance investing, I only do it if I partner with the best of breed on the ground. I never try and do anything myself. Now you might see that there's quite a lot of residential there and some people say to me, do you only know about residential? Not at all. At the moment, we're currently doing an office park in, in America worth $16 million. It's got, it's got a cash net yield of 15%. The financing has got, a, we've got 50% loan to value financing and it's got an IRR of 23%. So we've got quite a lot of experience in terms of the different fields, not just in America, but also in Australia and in, and in London. Now, just in my interest, let's interact a little bit here. Who actually knows about IPS in terms of who we are? Is this your first webinar? Have you been following us for a while? Have you been following us for more than 12 months? I'm just interested because if you can give me this feedback, then I can tell you whether how much I need to tell you about ourselves and what we do. So... I'm just interested if you could please just fill it in, and I, I know then where, where we stand. I can see Carol just typed in there my first, so that's great. Um, but uh, you'll see there there's actually a survey up on the screen if you could just, uh, if you could just vote quickly. Okay, I can see 44% of people have voted, so we need to, uh, we need to get everyone's attention here. I, uh, the beauty with these programs is I can actually see who's online and who's paying attention. Okay, so let me close out that poll and I'll share with you. Very interesting. So pretty much uh, this is a lot of people's first webinar. So 
Firstly, welcome to the webinar. I hope you enjoy the experience. I absolutely love it. I can sit at the comfort of my home here in Nisner and Tyson Island, and you guys can sit in the comfort of your home, and we can share a lot of information in terms of what we're doing and, and hopefully add value to people's lives. So just as my interest, let me tell you a little bit about IPS because quite a few people, it's their first time. We've been around for over 10 years. We've helped over 2,000 people invest internationally in property to a value of over $1.7 billion. We only do international investment. We've got offices in South Africa, both in Cape Town and Johannesburg, Australia, the UK, and America. We spend millions on research every single year. In fact, with regards to America, we've subsequently spent 2.7 million rand. That's actually in hard costs, flights, accommodation, and paying for research on the ground in terms of America. And that's in our last seven trips to America. We, got, we, we pride ourselves on our best of breed partners. Like I said to you, we're only as good as our partners. And really with 10 years experience, we, we have learned, and I'll go into a little bit de detail later, how we find those best partners. We've got a sophisticated IT platform, which provides us with efficiency and transparency in terms of managing the whole process, but not just that, also with our clients in terms of their experience. We've got a very experienced after-sales division. We call it a private banking service. Just like Investec is arguably the best private bank in South Africa, we are the only property company that provides a private banking service. You know, a lot of people think that buying a property is all about finding the property. We believe that buying a property is only 20% about buying the property and 80% about the management, the maintenance, the tax, the structuring, and the compliance. And really, that is what our private banking service does. It holds your hand and it takes you through the entire process, just like a private banker. We have access to off-market opportunities. I was just on the phone today with John Chin, our asset manager in America, and he's uncovered some really good opportunities that on our buyer's trip, we're actually going to be sharing with people. It'll be the first time that anyone will have access to these opportunities, not only in America, but also globally. And, you know, RJ, one of our partners, was at the auctions last week. So we're constantly getting access to stuff that is not on the internet. Anyone that knows how property works, there's like an inner circle. And you're either part of the inner circle or you're not. Now, the reason we do this is that we basically started IPS based on Zig Ziglar's principle. And that is that you can have anything you want in life if you help enough other people get what they want. So we are all investors. And every single person that's part of the team is an investor and an international investor. And the reason we do it is that by working with other sophisticated investors, we can all collectively come together with more buying power and we can get access to better and better partners and better and better opportunities in the inner circle. And then for those of you interested in qualifications, I don't really think it counts for a hell of a lot, but I've got an undergrad honors degree, cum laude. I've got a master's degree from London University, cum laude. We've got, uh, we, we've got, I've got certified residential specialist, which is the highest qualification out of America. And we were also the first company to be invited onto the panel for the AIPP, which is, stands for Association of International Property Professionals. By first company, I mean first South African company. We won an award in 2008 for the most professional uh, company in Africa in terms of international property investment. But I think that that's all immaterial and in, in comparison with the results because results are actually everything that counts. So... I've, I went to America. I've been to America a number of times, but I went in 2010. I spent five weeks there traveling around trying to find opportunities. I knew there was opportunity on the ground, but I couldn't find partners that I could trust. And so after five weeks and traveling all over America, I finally came home, investing in nothing and not helping clients. We went back in April last year. I went with Neil Peterson, the owner and publisher of Real Estate Investor Magazine, and also Brendan Brown, my partner. And we went to go and reinvestigate. We went with a different strategy in terms of finding partners. And we were blown away by the opportunity. And we decided to start investing pretty heavily. In the last 17 months, we've been there seven times. We've acquired 251 properties. We've uh, bought uh, properties to a value of $25.7 million. The capital growth we've experienced has been between 10 and 30%, depending on the different markets and the different timings as to when the properties were bought. The net yields range from 8 to 15%. And I will reiterate, that's a net yield, not a gross yield, a net yield. So after all expenses, pre-tax. We've done five buyer's trips. You know, we were going over buying a lot of property and then our clients said, well, can you buy for us? And then they started saying, well, when are you going? I'll come with you. And so we actually started doing buyer's trips. 
And I'll explain a little bit about that a little bit later. But interestingly enough, a lot of people also say, have I missed the boat? Well, not at all. On our last trip in July, we bought 171 properties with an IRR of over 20%. And interestingly enough, I'm actually going back to America in two and a half weeks to go and buy as much property as I can get my hands on in terms of where we are because we've got great partners on the ground and they're constantly uncovering new opportunities. Now, people say, well, what is the buyer's trip and what is it all about? Basically, it was created by our clients because they were coming to us and they were saying, well, we want to come with you. So we put together this trip and the benefit of coming with us on this trip is that you get six things. The first one is that you get information. Now, you can read about the American government shutdown. You can read about quantitative easing. You can read about the economy going up or down. But the bottom line is there's nothing more quality than actually getting on, onto the ground, talking to people, everyone from taxi drivers in New York to Wall Street bankers to accountants to lawyers to property people to the man in the street and really getting an essence and a gut feel for what is happening on the ground. Not what you're reading on the internet, not what the press is sensationalizing, what is actually happening. So the first thing is you get the right information. The second thing is you get the right partners because we've got all the partners on the ground. We have vetted them through numerous transactions and over many, many years. And ultimately, you get to come along. You get to shake their hand. You get to look them in the eye. You get to meet their teams. You get to see their operations. You get to see if they're, if they're professional outfits and whether they're someone that you would like to do business with. The thing that I pride myself on is that we've got complete transparency in our company. There's absolutely nothing to hide. And that's why we can do one of these bias trips. People can come over and they can actually see and meet the people on the ground. The third thing is that they can take action. You know, a lot of people go to a lot of expense. They fly all the way to London or Sydney or Atlanta. They don't have everything set up. And one of two things happens. They either panic purchase, which means they buy the wrong thing, or they buy nothing and they come home very frustrated. We've got a very sophisticated system where we understand exactly what it is you're looking for before you go over. We then effectively get our partners ready so that when you're on the ground, you are actually seeing properties that are available now so that you literally can take action if you find the right property. We also believe in having a lot of fun. You know, at the end of the day, you can't go all the way to one of the best tourist destinations in the world and not have fun. So whether it's New York or Atlanta or Memphis, you know, Elvis's town, you know, there are so many good opportunities to, to have fun there. And we do certainly believe in working hard and playing hard. Some people say, well, you know, I don't want to go over and, and be there with other people. It's the worst attitude to have. You know, at the end of the day, you're only as good as the people you hang around with. Your results are determined by the people that you associate with. And on these trips, we have multi-millionaires. We have billionaires that come with us. And the beauty is, is that their level of sophistication is incredible. Henny Mercedes is one of my business partners. He started investing with us in Australia four and a half years ago. He invested $4 million. We've turned that into $40 million. We've subsequently listed the company, and now it's worth $200 million Aussie dollars. Now, I'm just going to repeat that. We started with $4 million. It, we turned it into $40 million, and now it's worth $200 million. And that was in residential and commercial development. Now, interestingly enough, he's coming with us on this next trip. And it, I can't overemphasize how important it is to have someone like that, to be able to ask questions, to be able to listen to them in terms of their analysis, their risk how they de-risk projects, and how they ensure that, that we make the right decisions. Now, interesting, if you're at the same level of sophistication, great. Then you get to, to, to talk at the same level. But if you're not, then you get to learn. But the beauty is the people that come and interact get so much value from each other. I can't tell you how great the trip actually is. And then lastly, we've got an event uh, where we've been invited. Henny's been invited to represent South Africa to talk about investing globally and investing in Africa. It's 800 of the top businessmen and property professionals in America. It's not a jump up and down and dance affair. It's a very sophisticated wealth event. And as Henny's speaking, we managed to get 10 VIP tickets. And so 10 of our clients are coming along with us to be able to go and meet with 800 of the best businessmen and best businesswomen in America. So if you're interested in more details on the bias trip, please just type in bias trip. And I can send you the agendas and uh, the itinerary and everything. But we're going at the end of the month, and it's going to be an absolutely fantastic trip. I think it's going to be one of the best, if not the best, we've ever put together, just based on the opportunities. Now, what quite a few people also 
don't understand is that it's a mixture of residential and commercial. So depending on which one you like, residential or commercial, we've got both opportunities and you get to learn both. So if you're interested, just put buyer's trip and we can send you more details. Now, people say, where do you invest and why do you invest? Well, we've actually got a sophisticated system called the Global Property System. Most of you would have heard of Clem Sunter. Clem Sunter is one of the top five most respected scenario planners globally. He's one of the top three most respected businessmen in South Africa for changing the landscape of South African business over the last 20 years. And what we did is that Clem Sunter basically has a model where there's four scenarios for the global economy. And there's three scenarios for the South African economy. Now, I've heard Clem speak for over five years. And I thought, well, there's no point in me just getting the information. I need to have a model so that I can actually make the right decisions. And so we built the global property system. It's a four-dimensional graph that allowed us to not use gut feel, but to use actual science, facts, and statistics to have a system to decide where the best places around the world are to invest based on the fundamentals. And really, what it allows you to do is to, to rank countries. So where we sit, and, and also please understand this is completely dynamic, and it changes all the time depending on the research and the numbers. But as we stand at the moment, America is the only country which is in the quadrant high return, low risk. Australia is in low return, low risk. The UK is on the, on the border between low risk and high risk. And ultimately, South Africa, India, China, Cyprus, and a number of other countries are actually sitting in low return, high risk. Now, we only like to work with the best. I've already explained who Clem Santa is, and I would highly recommend that you go and get his book, The Mind of a Fox. It basically gives you a great strategy to be able to try and predict the future so that you can make the right decisions. We also went and created the book, Property Going Global. So all the system that I just spoke about in terms of the global property system, you know, we, we like to think of it as your GPS, like in a car. It provides you, the, you know, the right information based on a system to be able to get to your destination. And the book, The Property Going Global, we've, we've written it with Clem Sunter. And all of you that are online tonight will actually be getting a copy of Property Going Global. So if you'd like a copy, uh, a copy, please just type in Property Going Global and I will send you the ebook in terms of where we are. The final version. Please understand the ebook does have a couple of spelling mistakes. It's just the beta version now. The final version is coming out in early November, um, where, where the final hard copies will actually be printed. Now, people say to me, why do I invest in America at the moment? And sometimes you can get into the macro things, or you can just look at it at, a, at an entry level, basic level. So just like my London property, this was a property that I bought back in October 2012, so this time last year. We bought it for, at the time, $85,000. It's now worth about $120,000. It's a nice four-bedroom home in Atlanta. The replacement value, now this is a very, very important. To rebuild this house would actually cost between $90 and $100 per square foot. This house is about 2,000 square feet. So to rebuild this house would cost anywhere between $180,000 and $200,000 without the land. So can we understand that, yes, it would have been better to buy this house last year in October at 85000 but now when you're buying it at 120, it's still significant value. I don't care what the highs were of 2007, but what I do care about is what the intrinsic value is in terms of what I'm buying at now, and it's 40% below replacement cost. The next thing that's very, very important for me is the income. I'm buying properties in America at the moment with a net yield, and again, I reiterate, not gross, net. So after all expenses, insurance, maintenance, vacancies, et cetera, management, it's everything pre-tax is between 8 to 13%. So for me, that makes a huge thing. If I look at England as an example, particularly London, the property in London for the last four months has been the most expensive it's ever been recorded. So the risk is far higher because if you're buying something at full market value, the chances of it going down are a lot higher than something where I'm buying it at a 40% intrinsic discount. Secondly, if I buy a property in London today, I have a net yield of between 2 to 3%, and here I'm getting a net yield of 8 to 13%. So for me, it's an absolute no-brainer. Now, I own a, quite a bit of property in London. I am not selling it, but I'm just not buying more at the moment based on 
where we are in terms of the, the actual numbers. And lastly, something that's very exciting in the last three months, we've actually come across financing now. So we've got access to financing. And we've literally, in the next couple of days, we've got a couple of private meetings with our clients where we're going to show them how they can build a credit rating in less than six months. And with a credit rating, they can get access to finance at 6% with a loan to value of 80%. And that 6% is fixed for 30 years. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you don't need a degree in maths to work out that if you're getting a mortgage rate of 6% fixed for 30 years at a loan to value of 80% and you're getting a net yield of 8 to 13%, it is a no-brainer. You can look at it at a macro level. We like to use the research by The Economist. The Economist takes the top 20 countries for the last 20 years. And I don't care whether you are valuing residential or commercial. The bottom line is all property should be, should be valued based on income. And when you look at it based on The Economist, the United States at the moment is 12% undervalued based on income. Britain and Australia, Australia is 24% overvalued. And Britain is 14% overvalued. And this is the type of numbers and the type of research we use for the Global Property Index. So I'm going to open up the curtain here a little bit and show you the fundamentals and how we actually work it out. The first pillar of the table. Now, any good table has four legs. And if you take away one of those legs, the table not only becomes unstable, but often falls over. So the first leg of the table, the first fundamental is economic risk. And economic risk is determined by Clem Sunter in terms of his scenario planning. So what is the economic risk to the country? The second fundamental is the value of the property discount. Now, whether you're buying a share or property or a business, if you buy it at a discount, your risk factor is a lot lower than if you buy it at full value. Now, this is actually based in terms of the value of the discount on The Economist in terms of their report and their research in terms of the values. The property fundamentals, it's made up of two components. Firstly, it's made up of population growth. As Dr. Dolph de Roos says in Real Estate Riches, if you take a country like Japan, where the population has declined from 120 million to 100 million, it's no surprise the property market actually has gone stagnant since the early 90s to today because the population growth is in decline. It's no different in Europe where you have an aging population. In fact, as Clem Sunter says, if you put a roof over an English village, you actually have an old age home. So we take our population growth on the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, and the population growth on a yearly basis. Then you've got supply and demand. Now, interestingly enough, this is one of the most important fundamentals of property. If supply and demand are in kilter, then the market is robust. And no matter what happens with the economics around the world, the market generally will survive. You can take Australia. You can take South Africa. Both of them did, although they felt the global financial crisis, the market pretty much went sideways, pretty stagnant. In a place like London, because supply and demand is in kilter, there's more demand than there's supply. Even though we had the global financial crisis, the market lost 15%. But in 12 months, it recovered by 17% because these, these metrics were in kilter. And by then, it's never looked back. But markets like Ireland, Italy, Spain, Cyprus, they took an absolute hiding. In many instances, they lost 30 to 70 percent, including America, actually. And the reason being is that they had an oversupply. But interesting enough, the markets that had an oversupply not only crashed, but have stayed bumping along the bottom for the last five or six years. And when one takes a place like Spain, they're literally giving away passports at the moment where the prime minister came out and said, it's the only way to get rid of the oversupply of properties. We've got 700,000 properties oversupply. So yes, you can get a passport, but you're not buying yourself an investment because you're not going to be able to rent it out and there's going to be no capital growth. So interestingly enough, people say, well, what about America? Well, six years ago, America had 10 million homes oversupplied. But because they've had economic growth and because they've had population growth, they've sapped up that inventory. And so now the fundamentals are coming back into equilibrium. And that is why we're starting to see the market recovering. And the last one is rule of law. Now, interestingly enough, um, Mario says he can't hear me. He doesn't have a mic. Uh, Morris, you can phone in if you want to. If you click on telephone, you can phone in um, and you'll be able to hear us better. So the last one is rule of law. 
And a lot of people don't take this into account. If you buy in a first world country like America, do you know that the law protects you as a landowner? Now, not, all, not everywhere in America, only in some states, in the states that we invest in. And if a tenant doesn't pay, they will be evicted in three to six weeks. No questions asked by the courts and the sheriff. That's in comparison with South Africa, where it's virtually impossible to get them unless you know the red ants out of your house. If they tell you they're pregnant, they're in for another nine months. And to be honest, whether it's residential or commercial, the law is not there to protect the property owner. Whereas in a first world country, it is. And so this is the last and most fundamental leg of the table. And it's actually the reason why I only invest in first world countries, be it London, Australia, or America. If you take a place like India, all the other fundamentals are great. It's got good economic growth, good population growth, good supply and demand, but there's no rule of law. Therefore, I'm not prepared to invest there. So that really gives you your risk value discount. And on the right hand side, you've got your return. Now, the weighting is 70% in the favor of yield. The biggest lesson I learned from the global financial crisis is those people that focus on income not only survive, but actually thrive. And those people that focus on capital growth, it's like betting against winter. They eventually die. And so we've given a weighting of 70% to income and only 30% to growth. And ultimately, this gives us the global property system. As I said to you, it is dynamic and it changes. Because when you look at it, The Economist, this research comes out at the end of August every year. And at the end of August last year, I've told you now that just now, a month or two ago, that they said America was 12% undervalued. But a year ago, they said that America was 19% undervalued. So the market is recovering. And it won't be like this forever. And America won't remain in that quadrant forever. But while the opportunity is good, that is why I and our clients are taking as much advantage as possible. But one must realize that this ship is sailing and we're not, but we're not sure how much longer the numbers will tell us that it's the right thing to do. Now, just as a matter of interest, I want to do another quick poll here. Where have people invested? I'm interested to see what their experience is. So they've not invested yet. They've invested in South Africa. They've invested offshore, but not in America. Um, they've invested offshore and in America. So I'm just very interested to see what people's different experience levels are. So um, I'd really appreciate if everyone votes. I can see the votes are coming in thick and fast. So I do appreciate that. It's always good to just understand who's online and uh, what your experience level is, because the more I understand your experience, the more I can help you to be able to add as much value as possible. Okay, so let me close out that poll and share the results. Very interesting. 73% of the people who invest in South Africa, 9% have invested offshore, but not in America, and 9% have invested offshore in America. So thank you very much for that. That's, uh, that's fascinating. So what I want to do is run through 10 questions, or 11 questions actually, that we get asked all the time, that are basically our frequently asked questions. And the first one is, how do you choose the right partners? Now, do you realize that over 80% of people that actually invest offshore lose money? And the reason that 80% of people that invest offshore lose money is because, firstly, they make panic investments. As I said to you already, they jump on an airplane, the rand is sliding, they jump on an airplane, they fly to London, they fly to Sydney, they fly to Atlanta, and they're trying to buy something in three days. Now, I always say, if a British person came to Johannesburg for three days, what would be the chance of them finding a good property investment? And if you agree with me that it would be zero, then why do we as South Africans think we can do the same? Because what they do is they go over, they put them out themselves under pressure. They then meet an estate agent who tells them exactly what they want to hear. And they buy something that is not a good investment. So what we believe is it's all about the partners on the ground. And the way to answer your question as to how we choose the right partners is that by doing this over 10 years, we've made a lot of things, we've done a lot of things right, we've also made mistakes. And through mistakes, you get to learn. You get to learn how to ask the right questions. So very quickly now, we can go in and we can ask the right questions and we can determine whether or not we're working with the right partners. When we first went to America back in April last year, we did eight cities in 11 days. Now that doesn't mean we invested in every city. We went in and we understood who the partners were on the ground and whether or not we could work with them. And one of the most fundamental things is that they need to have everything under one roof. We don't like companies that help you find a property and then they hand you over to their mate that's an estate agent or a management agent because that is fraught with disaster. We want it under one roof 
where someone can help us find a property, they can renovate the property, they can manage the property, and they can maintain it so that the left hand is accountable to the right hand. Some of the partners we've dealt with just in the last uh, year and a half, I mean, this is actually George Ross on the, on the top left here. Now, George Ross is the right-hand man of Donald Trump. He's his attorney. He's 84 years old. He's his number one confidant, and he's actually worked with Donald Trump for over 30 years. He's been in the property game in America for over 50 years, and I got to play golf with him about uh, two months ago. I actually shared a golf cart with him, and it was the most amazing day being able to ask someone who probably has more experience about the American property market than anyone else. And I was very intrigued and, and, and quite uh, chuffed that he said the two or three markets that we've been investing in were two or three of the best markets in America to actually be investing on. Then J.D. Fox is the world's number one wealth and business coach. And he's actually my business coach. And I've been doing a lot of work with him in terms of his partners on the ground in America and also, you know, a lot of the people that he's introduced me to both locally in terms of how we do it and knowing where to invest and what to invest in. Warren Buffett has a philosophy when he invests. Warren Buffett says that the only way to succeed is to actually pay someone to tell you why not to invest. So whether he invests in property or business, he actually pays an analyst to do all the research, to show him all the risks. And, and if the guy can persuade him not to invest, then he will basically not invest. So. We went and uh, we had a similar guy, a similar person in, in Australia called Mark. It was an extremely successful strategy. So when Henny came with me to America last year in, in August, we went around the country. I introduced him to all the partners and he said, John Chin, that's our guy. He's our guy that will be effectively our Warren Buffett going in, looking at deals, analyzing the risks, and ultimately making sure that we understand them and killing deals. Interestingly enough, John actually told us he had a company called Deal Kill a website called DealKill, where he actually helps investors make sure that they are making the right decisions. We partnered with Grant Thornton, they're actually equity partners in Wealth Migrate, and effectively they're one of the top five accounting firms in the world. They help us with our tax, our structuring, and our compliance. We spent over 240,000 Rand on advice alone in terms of what is the best structures in America from a tax and legal perspective. And then our lawyers and our accountants, and obviously, it goes without saying that in all the areas we invest, we've got the partners that can help us find the right product, stuff that's off the market. We can renovate it. We can manage it. We can maintain it, et cetera. And, and we really pride ourselves on our partners. So people say to me, how do you get the right information? Well, it's very, very simple. And if anyone wants more information on any of these things, please just type in asset manager. If you type in asset manager, then they will be able to get back to you and give you more information. People say, how do you get the right information? Well, basically, it's all about time and money. We've been to America seven times in the last 17 months. We go on average for two, two and a half weeks. We spend 2.7 million Rand in terms of information. When we launched Australia, it took us over a year to launch Australia, four trips to Australia. When we launched America, it actually took us over two and a half years. So how do we get the right information? We do it by, by, by spending time on the ground by finding the right partners and then learning and getting the right information and then actually sharing that with you in terms of what we learn and how we do it. How do you know where the right areas are to invest? This is a great one. Do you know that Johannesburg, Cape Town, Pretoria is what's known as a metropolitan statistical area? Now, in South Africa, there's about 15. In America, do you know that there are over 300? So the question is, where do you invest? And a lot of people would have heard of a lot of different places. We have been to all 17 of these, these cities, every single one of them. We've been there. We've analyzed the markets. We've analyzed the partners on the ground. And yet we've only invested in Orlando, North Dakota, Atlanta, Memphis, and Oklahoma. So people say to me, but what about Vegas? Vegas is awesome. Yep, it is awesome. I'd love to go to Vegas. But we don't have partners on the ground we could trust. Phoenix. You know, Dolph DeRuz was out here last year saying Phoenix is great. So we went to Phoenix. And to be honest, the market had overshot itself. And we could get far better value in a place like Atlanta. So we chose not to invest in Phoenix. We invested in Atlanta. All the different markets, I could give you a reason as to why we do or don't invest. But the number one reason I would say is that it comes down to our quality of our partner on the ground and whether they can execute on the opportunity. And so if you are interested in all these different areas, we've got market reports on all these different areas, just type in asset manager and one of our asset managers can explain to you which markets we invest in and why we don't invest 
in some markets like San Diego or Los Angeles or Detroit or Charlotte or Miami and why we do invest in some areas. Because it comes down to the property fundamentals, it comes down to the economics, the tax, whether the state is tenant friendly or landlord friendly, because that determines how quickly you can evict someone. So there's a huge amount of components that we take into account as to where we invest and why we invest there. How do I know I'm getting the best deals? Now, this is always a great question. You know, people are always nervous, particularly when they're doing something long distance. But at the end of the day, we have partners who are working in the inner circle. We are getting access to properties that are off market and below market value. And really, I can give you countless examples. But the best one I've got is that in May, we decided to try and test something. And Brendan and I actually went over with a million dollars in our bank account. We had So we had an American bank account with a million dollars. We had an American cell phone. We went online in an area where our partner told us was a good area to invest. And we tried to buy 20 different properties. And do you know that we were arriving in Atlanta seven days later and not one person bothered to get back to us? Not one email, not one phone call. At the end of the day, the way that our partners uncover the properties is amazing. And really, we get access to some fantastic stuff. And if you want to, if you want to test it and you don't trust it and it sounds too good to be true, then come on the buyer's trip. Come and check it out. Come with us with your ears and eyes, meet the partners, see what's happening on the ground, do the research, just like so many people before you in five different buyer's trips, and you will see the value in terms of, of people. I mean, it's testament that every single person that comes on the buyer's trip, we have an average of over two properties per person, because when they come there, they see the value on the ground. It's so far away. How do I manage the investment? Well, I think this is a great question. You know, a lot of people are concerned about it. And as I said to you, I learned a very long time ago that um, trying to do property management long distance is very difficult. But to be honest, anyone that's a sophisticated investor, whether they live in Cape Town and own a property in Cape Town or whether they live in Johannesburg and own a property in Johannesburg, they actually take property management as one of the expenses of owning property. Just like rates and taxes, just like insurance, just like vacancies, maintenance, etc. And so you know, I own a number of properties in Johannesburg, but I don't. when I lived in Johannesburg, I didn't manage any of them. I own a number of properties in Cape Town. When I lived in Cape Town, I didn't manage any of them. And with that mindset, that is why I'm able to live in Nisner, because my properties are, are in Joburg and Cape Town, London, Australia, America. It doesn't matter. It comes down to the quality of your property managers. Now, I always say that finding a good property manager is like an oxymoron, because no disrespect if there's any property managers online but it's very very difficult to find good property managers trust me to find good property managers that know how to communicate with international people is even harder but when you've done this over 2000 times in the last 10 years you certainly get a feel as to what works and what doesn't work but at the end of the day sometimes we make mistakes in orlando we made a mistake and we actually fired the property manager at the end of last year because they weren't communicating well enough with us and our clients and we moved all our clients over to a new property manager so, but it all comes down to your property manager and the people that you're partnering with. And I think that one of the things that we offer that's really, really valuable is that we are like-minded investors. So we know exactly what investors need to be able to make the opportunity work. How do I get financing? Well, again, I don't have time to go into it tonight because at the end of the day, we've got, very diff we've got different areas that have different financing. But the bottom line is, we can get you financing today. It doesn't matter what your credit rating is here in South Africa. We can get you, and it doesn't matter what your income is. We can get you financing at a 50% loan to value. And interestingly enough, how they work out whether or not you can afford the financing is not based on you. In South Africa, Standard Bank wants to know how much money you earn, and then they send a value to the property. What they do here, our partners vet the property manager first. They want to set you up to succeed. So they are, don't care about how much income you earn in South Africa. What they care about is the quality of the property manager and whether that property manager is going to be, ex, be able to execute on the property, the asset, and be able to bring in the income. So you can't just phone them up and say, oh, i got a property in America and I want you to finance my property. It doesn't work like that. They only work with specific property managers. Secondly, they do evaluation on the asset and the quality of the asset. So they're not interested in who you are. They're interested in the quality of the asset. And this is such a mindset shift because if I'm investing with a finance partner like that that's giving me 20 years fixed rates, and interestingly enough, 
is more concerned about the income and the quality of the management agent that's, that's bringing in the income than me, then I've got a huge amount of comfort in terms of that solution working long term and me being able to collect my rent. As I said to you, what we've also done now is with regards to, to our, our credit rating, our current clients are also starting to build credit ratings. And in six months or less, they will be able to get traditional financing, which will actually be 30-year financing, loan to values of 80%, and actually, interestingly enough, um, fixed for 30 years at a 6% interest rate. Property management, maintenance, tax, structuring, and banking. You know, this is what we call our private banking. And this is quite a simple, you know, graph, but we've got a very sophisticated mind map. And uh, Brendan, my business partner, is very good at this. Yaku manages the entire team. And what we do with our private bankers is hold your hand through the entire process. So we help you set up the structure. We help you set up a bank account. We help you get your, your income tax number. We help you basically buy the property, manage the property, and maintain the property. So it's an end-to-end -end solution from beginning to end. And that is what we call our private banking service. If it's so good in America, why are the Americans not buying? And why are they coming to South Africa? Well, this is a great question. Firstly, the Americans are not investing at, for, for one of four reasons. The first one is that they're shell-shocked. You know, they bought properties that lost anywhere from 30 to 70% of value. And so they really don't believe that property is a very good investment. On top of that, their property got remortgaged, their property got repossessed. So they can't get credit. Their credit rating is stuffed. And so even if they want to invest, they can't get credit. Then all the properties that we're buying are on auction and, and, and generally are cash offers because that's how you get the best deals. They don't have cash. And finally, all the properties that we're buying generally need to have a level of renovation. And we spend on average between fifteen and seventeen thousand dollars per property, and they just don't have that cash, so they can't they can't do it. But that's not saying the Americans, as a whole, are not doing it, because the big sophisticated investors, one of John Chin's clients, is a company that last year bought twenty nine thousand homes. So don't get me wrong, the sophisticated investors certainly are investing. It's just the mom and pops that aren't, and that's great because they're our tenants. The second question is why are they coming to South Africa? Well, they're not. I told you I went to America in 2010. I spent five weeks there looking for partners on the ground, but I couldn't find anyone I could trust. We went back in April 2012, and we went and interviewed partners on the ground. They were too busy helping American investors and international investors invest in America than they were to come out to South Africa. It was us that went to them so that we could provide our clients with a quality service. There are lots of companies that offer offshore investment. Many of my friends have lost money. How do I choose the right company? Well, all I can say there is that having done this for a long time and having helped over 2,000 people, we wrote a report on the six things you need to know before you invest offshore. Now, to be honest, whether you invest with us or not doesn't bother me. All I would ask you to do is to read that report because what it'll do is it'll teach you the questions we ask to try and make sure that you're dealing with a professional company that you have the right information and that you've got the right partners. So if you want that report, just type in there, asset manager, six things. So asset manager, six things. And then I'll get one of the asset managers to send you that report because this report will differentiate you and as a sophisticated investor and help you make the right decisions in terms of investing offshore. Surely it's cheaper if I deal directly with the Americans. How do you make your money? Well, that's a great question. Firstly, we charge a small fee up front in terms of our private banking service. That's the service that helps you from beginning to end. But most importantly, we deal with our partners on the ground. There's a commission. We split the commission 50-50. And at the end of the day, we need them and they need us. And so by splitting the commission 50-50, we look after each other. And more importantly, you as the client, if you jump on an airplane and want to cut us out, it doesn't matter. The price is exactly the same. It's The commission will be paid to the sales agent in terms of where it actually is. So that's how we make our money. And again, the beauty of coming on the buyer's trip is there's complete transparency in terms of what we do, how it works, our partners on the ground and the values of the assets. So who else have you helped? You know, a lot of people ask questions and it all sounds very good or it sounds too good to be true, but you know, I wanna see some, some other people. So I wanna give you just a couple of examples. We helped Gert Dupree, a farmer. He's based about two hours outside Johannesburg. Now, he couldn't come on the buyer's trip. You don't always have to come with me. If you can't come with me, 
you give us a mandate and we effectively are your ears and eyes on the ground. You tell us what you're looking for. And then when we're there, we take videos and pictures. We send it back to you. We have a talk with you on the telephone. And if you're happy, we, we help you secure the property. So that's what Kurt did. And I bought him this house in Atlanta last year. It was a really nice house in a really nice area. $135,000. The net rent is, is 1033 or a net yield of 9.18%. He's experienced growth of 25 to 30% over the last 12 months. Now, again, it's, it's quite tricky to work out that exact number because obviously you only know that when you sell, but that's by doing comparative market analysis in the area. The RAND is devalued by 23% since he actually invested in August last year. He's had a net income of over $12,000 for the last 12 months. He also bought another apartment in Orlando. So he bought a one-bedroom, one-bathroom for $57,000. His net rent was $3,800 for the year. And his total growth was 17%. And as I said, the RAND is devalued by 23%. And what I think is very interesting is that over 70% of our clients reinvest with us. And just a week or so ago, uh, Hertz invested another $100,000 in Wealth Migrate, which is where we, where we buy up big opportunities. We bought 66 opportunities on a golf course. And um, you won't believe it, but uh, we're basically buying stuff on a golf course, fully serviced. On, a, on an operational golf course in Atlanta for $15,000 a stand or a plot, uh, fully serviced, so ready to construct a house on, plans in place, zoning, everything. And um, actually that got snapped up in an afternoon, literally with our current clients. And those are the type of things that people get access to as our clients or people that come on on, uh, you know, on the buyer's trip. And that, that's got an expected return of 27% in six months in terms of where we actually are. So, you know, that's, uh, that's hurt. Tristan, he's a developer based in East London. He bought a two-bedroom, two-bathroom, this one up in the in the up the top here in Orlando for sixty-nine thousand dollars. He's had a net income of six thousand three hundred and eighty-eight dollars for the year, twelve point two percent net yield, twelve percent growth, and the rand is devalued by twenty-three percent. He also bought a house in Atlanta for ninety-seven thousand dollars. His net income was nine thousand five hundred dollars or nine point seven four. His growth is eighteen and a half percent. The RAND is devalued 23%. And interestingly enough, he actually got a tax bill from the IRS because he was buying everything cash. And so he subsequently in the last two months gone and bought another one in Oklahoma and another one in Atlanta, both with finance. Because we believe it's far better to, to put money towards growing your portfolio than paying the tax man. Raleen and Ian Powell, very interesting story. Raleen came over with us in October 2012. So she was actually on the buyer's trip. She bought this house on the right here for $95,000 in Atlanta. The projected rent was $1,050. When they got their tenant one month later, it was $1,150. So it was actually $100 more than the projected rent. Now, I know that doesn't happen very often in South Africa. The growth they've experienced over the last 12 months has been 36%. The rand is devalued by 14.9%. And interesting enough, her husband, Ian, you can see him here, came along in February because he wasn't able to make the October trip. He was so impressed by the quality of the house, the quality of the finishes, the quality of the tenant, that they bought two more properties. And interesting enough, in July, they actually immigrated to Australia. Their logic is that their money can work much harder for them in America than it can in Australia, but their global wealth has been protected, and that has allowed them to immigrate to Australia. Now, whether you want to immigrate to Australia or not is irrelevant, but it's provided them with the freedom to be able to make whatever decision they want. Andrew and Damien Tallinn. Um, Andrew's a financial advisor. Damien actually came over in October last year. And interesting enough, we always laugh. They tell us that they're going off to see their cousin and their auntie. But after a while, you know, you become good friends and you have a few drinks at night and they go, yep, we're going to see your competitor. And I always welcome it. I say, please go and see our competitor because we know that we deal with the best partners on the ground with the best, best quality. And she went off and she looked at the competitor. And funny enough, Michiel over here, who's an engineer and an MBA, he also went to look at the competitor and both of them came back and said, the competitors just cannot compare in terms of quality. And Michiel actually said that the competitor here in South Africa must be very good at Photoshop because the quality of the pictures on the internet compared to the actual areas and the property were really, really stark. And, um, you know, he also invested with us. Um, Damien bought two properties in Atlanta for about $95,000. They've had about 30% growth. The RAND has gone down by 14.9%, so much so that Andrew actually resigned in May and now wants to do this full time and is actually coming on our next buyer's trip 
for his clients. So I think that's a fairly good endorsement. And then Michael and Lee only said, Michael actually came over in February. He bought four properties for $456,000. One of the houses you can see on the right here, uh, Michael's standing here. It's the house behind him. He's had a growth of 16% in the last six months, which equates to $72,000. The RAND has devalued by 12.9%. His net income is $3,325 per month. Now, I mean, who here would like to live in South Africa and be earning literally 30 plus thousand Rand every single month doing nothing, completely passive? His total that he's earned in actual dollar income in terms of, sorry, Rand income in the last six months is over a million Rand. And I always say to people, they say to me, yeah, but Scott, I can do much better in South Africa. I challenge them to make a million Rand in six months based on these numbers, which is a total return of over 25% in, in what he's achieved in the last six months. And why was he able to do it? Because he spent the time and the money coming over in February and being able to actively understand the market and to get involved. He's been so impressed by what's happening in America. He's invested another $400,000 in Wild Migrate, we bought up 46 opportunities in Atlanta where we're going to build houses for about $280,000 and we can sell them into the local market for over $400,000. And he's also invested in our commercial office park, as I said to you, where we got net yields of over 15%. And it's not just about the big stuff. He's also bought another two residential opportunities and he's looking for a third. So he'll actually be up to seven. And that, you know, we're not really interested in helping people buy one-off houses. We love helping people build portfolios. That's what we're good at. And then lastly, Emmanuel and Kathy. Um, interesting enough, a lot of people say, yeah, it's not possible. Well, Emmanuel and Kathy are from Kenya. They live in Malaysia. They met Brendan on the internet. Brendan sold them and helped them invest in something sight unseen in Memphis. It was a type C. It was a three-bedroom, one-bathroom. They, they've got different types or, or categories of properties, type A, type B, and type C. And uh, this was a type C. They bought it for $55,000, so three bedroom, one bathroom. It's got a net yield of over 13%. They shopped around on the internet and they spoke to everyone because they were very yield hungry. But they came with us on the buyer's trip now in July. They were so impressed by the quality of their property, our partners on the ground and the tenant, that they subsequently bought another two properties. And Emmanuel's actually, funny enough, coming back on our next trip. And he also wants to be an affiliate partner and to help his friends and family out of Kenya and Malaysia. So it just gives you an idea of the type of people that are coming on the buyer's trip. But I would recommend that you go and look at YouTube and you just do a search, USA Buyer's Trip, and you will see all the people that come on the buyer's trip and their experiences. I really can't underemphasize how or overemphasize how great these buyer's trips are to come along and to get the right information and be able to make the right decisions. So just to repeat why I think you should come on a buyer's trip, you get the right information on the ground. You meet the partners on the ground. You get to take action. You get to see live investments and be able to take action. You have lots of fun. I tend to think that a lot of people come in and have more fun than they were expecting. You get to hang around and, and, and to do business and to meet with very, very sophisticated investors. You know, Henny, as I said to you, you know, just in South Africa is worth, uh, is worth um, over 500 million rand all through property and business. And internationally, in Australia, we've gone from 4 million to 40 million in four years and then listed the company for over 200 million. And that's in residential and commercial development. And then lastly, mega partnering, where you get to come along and as a VIP, get to get to meet with uh, some of the best businessmen and property people in America. So if you are interested in the buyer's trip, just type in buyer's trip and um, one of us will get back to you with more information in terms of when it is. But it's actually at the end of this month. So there's not a huge amount of time if you are interested. You know, we need to get you a visa and, and get you on. And again, if it's too short notice and you can't make it, then um, just type in mandate. And again, what the mandate is is where we understand what it is you're trying to achieve. We're not an estate agency. We don't sell you uh, houses or, or commercial buildings. We understand what it is you're trying to achieve, and then we help you find bespoke solutions. So if you're interested, just type in mandate. And one of, our, one of our asset managers will get back to you because we need to chat to you. We need to understand what it is you're trying to achieve, and then we can actually help you. So I just want to show you some pictures here of some of our buyer's trips. You can see what we do. This is us in New York. It was minus 12 degrees in February. Us South Africans are definitely not cut out to be able to, uh, to, to deal with this weather. This was us having some fun as tourists in May in uh, Times Square. This is actually us with Dr. Dolph DeRuis. He's the editor of uh, Real Estate, or the writer, the, the author of 
real estate riches and one of the most sophisticated and uh, well-known international investors. And this was actually us buying auction uh, properties on auction in Phoenix last year. This is us having some fun. Marius, who started out as a client and now is a good friend, and Brendan and myself going in a helicopter down into the Grand Canyon, having a couple of drinks and toasting down in the Grand Canyon, and then uh, going to see a show in Vegas. Absolutely amazing in terms of uh, what we saw and, and where we were in terms of Vegas. Then this was the group in October. As I said to you, this is actually, we bought this house um, in October in Atlanta. This was the group in February in uh, another house that we actually bought in our February trip. In terms of the caliber, I mean, you've got Peter Jack there, one of the most sophisticated uh, construction businessmen down in Cape Town. You know, Michael, one of the most sophisticated businessmen in, in Durban. So you've got incredibly successful people coming on these trips. We always get inside all the properties, so you get to be able to get all the right information, see the property, understand what the rates and the taxes and the management and the maintenance and the vacancies and everything are on the numbers. You can actually see the guy's board down below here so that they can make the right decisions. We go and open a bank account, so you get in the bank and you you open, you know, I always say it's easier to, to buy a gun in America than open a bank account, but we've got the partners now to be able to help our clients open up with Wells Fargo. Before you go out to any city, you know, a place like Atlanta is absolutely massive. You need to know where to invest, where not to invest. So this is RJ giving us a briefing on where to invest. There's a, there's a road there called the 285. Our competitor helps a lot of people invest inside the 285. The reason being is it's the cheaper properties. The rents look better on paper, and so the returns look better. But actually, in real life, the real returns and the real demand is for the bedroom communities outside the 285. So we only invest in certain areas where the fundamentals are right because safety is our number one priority, safety and wealth preservation. And this is RJ giving us a briefing. Every city we go to, we have a dinner. So you get to meet the accountant, the lawyer, the management agent, the inspection agent, every single person in the team. I see absolutely no point in going over there and just looking at properties if you don't get to experience who the entire team is. This is another dinner in one of the other cities. This is us on Beale Street where Elvis is from. It's really good fun. You know, depending on what night they are, there's like anywhere from five to 30 live bands. And, and we don't tend to do a lot of property the next day. Um, another dinner in Atlanta with the different partners. And then this, funny enough, was our last trip. I told you already about Emmanuel, who's from Malaysia. You effectively had Adrian from Canada. You had Clive from Australia. You had Howard from Cape Town, a, a very experienced construction. And he gave us a huge amount of information in terms of the refurbishment. This gentleman here, Nick, uh, works or owns a company that works with all the biggest architectural firms in, in South Africa and the biggest funds. And also this gentleman here, he was 25 years old, but he made 25 million US dollars at the age of 19. So, I mean, you really are dealing with some, some pretty sophisticated people. This gives you an idea of an apartment block that we're actually buying at the moment in Atlanta. We don't really like buying one-off apartments. We like to buy the whole block so that we can control the, the body corporate or the homeowners association. And this is in Midtown, so it's like buying in Santon. And then having a bit of fun um, outside the bull at Wall Street in New York, and then actually going up to North Dakota. If you don't know about North Dakota, North Dakota is the biggest geopolitical thing that's happened in the last uh, 30 or 40 years. America has found oil, and effectively they'll be self-sufficient of OPEC by 2017, and a net export about 2023. Now, in any oil rush or any gold rush, it's not about mining gold. It's about selling spades. And so we are providing residential accommodation for, for the explosion of the towns. And we're also buying uh, building commercial space because the 1,300 businesses have come into town. There's not one square meter of office space. And we've effectively got a net yield on our commercial office space of over 15%. And this is actually Henny in the middle and John Chin and myself going up to North Dakota, doing all the investigation and finding the right opportunities. And then we'll actually be there for Halloween. And uh, funny enough, this was Halloween last year in New York. And then lastly, as I said to you, Mega 8. And uh, it's the number one wealth uh, conference in the world. And you get to meet, and, and interestingly enough, the keynote speaker on this conference is Jack Welsh, the CEO of General Electric and one of the most sophisticated businessmen in the world. And because Henny's presenting, we've got 10 VIP tickets. And so 10 people will be able to spend the weekend with Jack Welsh in literally just a small group. The tickets cost anywhere from $8,000 to $50,000. And yet we've got 10 tickets 
for free for our clients to come and, and enjoy and experience and work with the best businessmen in America. So in terms of what's next, if you are interested, the most important thing is to speak to an asset manager. Please just put your, your name and number in now if you are interested and one of the asset managers can call you. So if you just put your name and number, one of the asset managers can call you and discuss it. Whether you're interested in coming on a buyer's trip, whether you want more information, whether you want a mandate, it doesn't matter. The most important thing is to talk with someone so that we can understand what it is you're trying to achieve. And then once we understand what it is you're trying to achieve, we can help provide you with solutions. For those of you that uh, don't want to call you know, or, or put your number in, you can call our office. We've got an office in Johannesburg and one in Cape Town. Obviously, it's not open now, but uh, during office hours, you can give them a call. And for those of you who don't like the telephone like my wife, well, you can email biostrip at IPS Invest. Now, we've only got a couple of tickets left. There's only four spots left. So unfortunately, not everyone will be able to come. But if you do, you know, it'll just we'll just do it in fairness in terms of time order. So whoever kind of puts their name in first or sends an email first, and then our, our asset managers will get back to you in the next 24 hours and actually be able to talk to you in terms of what it is that you're interested in. So if you've got any questions, please uh, please put them in. I'm just interested based on what I've shared with you and what we're doing. You know, are you ready to invest in America? Yes, I need more information or no. You know, at the end of the day, I need more information. Perfect. That's what our asset managers are for. Uh, no, that's perfect. We're not for everybody. Some people, you know, as I said, sounds too good to be true. And they, um, but I always say to people, if you're not sure, come on a buyer's trip. There's no better way than to come on the ground to get the right information. And, you know, it's interesting. Whenever people come on the buyer's trip, their trust level for us is generally between one and three out of 10. And when they finish the buyer's trip, it's always 10 out of 10. You can see that on all the testimonials on YouTube. And that's why people generally buy two or more properties. So I'm just interested in terms of where people are. I can see there. Let's share those results quickly. So 27% of people are ready. 64% uh, of people need more information. And 9% are not ready, which is which is perfect. We, uh, we're not for everybody. As with Investec, Investec uh, is only for certain people. And uh, generally, we like to work with uh, sophisticated people in terms of their knowledge and, and where they want to go and, and people want to deal with a private banking service. And then just in my interest, how much money capital do you have to invest now? So if you are interested and you do get the right information, let's just say that you speak to someone and um, they, they tell you all the information that you, that you really want to find out or you come on a buyer's trip and you get to experience it all on the ground and it really ticks your boxes in terms of wealth preservation, a plan B and peace of mind, you know, and, and offshore investment. How much capital would you be looking to invest? And not necessarily all of your capital. You know, a lot of our people do what we call the dip your toe strategy. And that's just a case of um, actually dipping your toe and, and seeing how it all works on top of the results. So you can see there in terms of the type of money. So naught to 300,000, that'll actually, you could buy a three bedroom, one bathroom house in America. 300 to 1 million, that'll actually allow you to, to buy in any of the different areas. And then ultimately 1 million and upwards. That'll allow you to, to be part of some of our sophisticated investments, some of the big commercial stuff that we're doing with other sophisticated investors. So, you know, ladies and gentlemen, there are our contact details. If you've got any questions, please just type them in now and I'll try and answer them for you. Or if you, as you know, as many of you have done already, if you just type in your name and number and literally I'll get one of the asset managers to get back to you in the next 24 hours or so. So if anyone's got any questions, please just type them in now. Okay, Robert, great question. How do I do avoid double taxation? So we've, um, as I said to you, spent a huge amount of money with Grant Thornton. In fact, 140,000, I'm sorry, 240,000 Rand. We've also currently got our accountant out from America in South Africa as we speak. and. Um, I had a meeting with Grant Thornton and our accountant on, on Tuesday. We've done a huge amount of work in terms of um, the, the taxation. But the bottom line is the structure that we've got helps you avoid double taxation. You will be taxed in America, but at, the, at one of the lower tax brackets. And then very much depending on your entity and how you own it and whether you bring the money back to South Africa will determine your taxation in terms of South Africa. But, you know, I can't really get into details of tax tonight online in the webinar, 
because I, I'm not a tax advisor, I can't give advice, I'm a property investor, but, and I will say that it comes down to bespoke information for each individual, but I will tell you that we've got the models and the solutions and the partners to be able to make it as legal and tax efficient as possible. Okay, so if you're interested, uh, Robert, I can get someone to, uh, to uh, when do you register with IRS? So you register with the IRS when you, when you buy through an LLC. So LLC stands for Limited Liability Company. If anyone in this country, if anyone in South Africa tries to sell you a property in America in your own name, then you know that they're a thief because they're being completely negligent. There's three major reasons why you have to buy through an LLC, which stands for Limited Liability Company. And, uh, but one of them is to protect you. The second one is because it's tax efficient. And the third one is because it helps you build a credit rating. And we actually help you, our partners help you set up the LLC. They register you with the IRS, both for income tax and for your LLC. And, and we help you manage and we help you with your tax affairs on an annual basis as well. Carla said, I would like to know what is the minimum cash needed? Carla, I would say it's about 300,000 Rand. So about 300,000 Rand cash is what is required to be able to put down a 50% deposit on one of these smaller three bedroom, one bathroom homes. Is it wise to sell in South Africa and buy in the US? Look, you know, Morris, at the end of the day, every man to himself. What a lot of our clients do is they even refinance in South Africa and then they take that money and they invest in America. And, you know, because they're getting a positive net yield in, in America, they offset that against their, their mortgage in South Africa. What most of the clients do is they don't bring the money back to South Africa to pay off the mortgage. They just pay off the mortgage in South Africa and they build their portfolio in America in terms of uh, in terms of how they're doing. But look, personally, um, over time, I've stopped investing in South Africa. Um, I'm not happy with the with the law and the fact that I, as a property owner, my rights are not protected. Um, I think there's great opportunity in South Africa, but I believe that uh, my wealth is better protected in first world countries with first world assets and a first world income. So the properties I've got in South Africa, I'm not selling them. Um, I'm holding on to them. I have refinanced a lot of them. I've refinanced my properties in London and Australia to invest in America because right now it's unprecedented, the opportunity in America. And to be honest, if I compare America to South Africa, American properties are about 30% cheaper than South African properties like for like, and they're getting double the yield. So I don't know if that answers your question, Marius. Um, and obviously I showed you all the stats earlier in terms of the long-term trends over the last 30 years. So are there any other questions? I, I do see that uh, with regards to time that, um, you know, we've only, uh, we've, uh, we don't have a huge amount of time left, but I'm happy to answer as many questions as I can. Robert said, I'm retired and looking for passive income, not long-term stuff. That's perfect. You know, Robert, um, a lot of our investors are, are looking for the same thing and they're getting a net yield of anywhere from 8 to 13%. So they're just looking for a solid investment. Where, a, where they've got a solid income. And, you know, in Atlanta, as an example, we've got three-year leases in place so they can rely on the income and in terms of what's coming in. Corno said, I missed the first part of the webinar. Can't listen tomorrow as I'm flying to Atlanta tomorrow. Can you please email me the slides to me or email recording? That's fine, Corno. I did a recording, so I'll send you an email. Um, who are you going to Atlanta? Um, I would highly recommend if you're going to look at property, you need to chat to one of our our guys before you leave tomorrow. I know the flight only goes at about seven o'clock tomorrow night. Trust me, I fly Joburg Atlanta all the time. So there's nothing more valuable than talking to the partners on the ground. So if you are interested, I highly recommend you need to chat to one of our guys, um, you know, before you go tomorrow. Um, Fuzal, do you sell businesses? Um, no, we don't. Uh, we're only a property company. Um, but depending on what you're looking for, I might have someone that might be able to assist you. But uh, yeah, we're, we're only a property company and we help people invest in residential and commercial property internationally. So um, I don't have experience in business. I, sorry, let me phrase it. I've got a lot of experience in business. I don't have experience in buying and selling businesses. And so I would have to put you on to someone in terms of where they are. Robert has asked, are you in South Africa now and where? I'm in Neisner, Robert. Uh, my office is in Johannesburg in Cape Town. I flew home from Cape Town this afternoon. I tend to spend Monday through Wednesday in either Johannesburg or Cape Town, and then I spend the weekend in Neisner. Um, I work from home Thursday, Friday, and then spend the weekend in Neisner. So that's, uh, that's where I'm based. My, my background is I'm a Durban boy, studied at UCT, lived in London for nine years, lived in Johannesburg for three and a half years, lived in Cape Town for two years, 
And uh, my wife and I finally compromised on lifestyle and family because her family lives in Neisner and I get the lifestyle and it's great for our children. So that's when we, uh, that's when we live in uh, Neisner. My team is actually in Durban next Thursday, Robert. Um, they're coming there on Thursday morning. They're doing a breakfast with our accountant uh, in Durban on Thursday. And so if you're interested, I can get one of them to contact you and we'll be able to uh, sit with you face to face and understand what it is you're trying to achieve and how we can help. For those of you in the different areas, um, as I said, we've got, uh, we've got offices in Cape Town and in Johannesburg. Our partners fly, or, or my, my team uh, and I fly to Durban regularly, uh, certainly at least once a month. And then different areas, we've got clients all over the place, whether it's Mozambique, Namibia, um, one in the Seychelles, you know, as I said to you. So, I mean, literally one in London, uh, some in Malaysia. So, you know, quite a few down in PE. So it doesn't really matter where you are. As long as you've got an internet connection, we can do business together. So that's perfect, Robert. We'll set something up with you next Thursday. Is there any other questions that, uh, that I haven't answered? Anything else that people are asking? You know, anything that is pertinent to you? Because I think it's very, very important that we answer any questions that you've got so that you can make the right, educated, informed decisions. I tell you what, while we're waiting for some more questions to come through, I want to finish off with a little story because I can see that we've only got a couple of minutes left. My uncle basically in uh, 2003 immigrated from Harare, Zimbabwe to Brisbane. He bought his way into Australia at the age of 56. So he couldn't get in on, on the, on the skills-based visa or anything. He just bought his way in. He bought a house for $1.8 million cash. He sent his kid to a private school, which happens to be Churchy in Brisbane. And most importantly, he didn't have to work for an Australian. He actually retired in Australia. And, um, People say, well, how do you do it? And it's very simple. 23 years later, he had the foresight to pre-plan. So at the age of 30, 23 years earlier, in 1980, he set up an offshore bank account. And while business was good, every time that he made some money, he put some of it overseas. And he invested in first world assets and first world income. And 23 years later, that decision allowed him to be able to have the freedom to do whatever he wanted. Now, he didn't want to leave Zim. Um, business was doing really well, and even though there were a huge amount of problems, but he did it for his children because the teacher kept changing every term and there were no dentists left. And so he made a decision to go to Australia. Now, whether you like that decision or not, it's irrelevant. It's the fact that he had the freedom to make any decision that he wanted to. And he did that by having the foresight 23 years earlier to start pre-planning. And all that I ask tonight is that if we've done nothing else, just think about my uncle and think about what you need to do so that you too have the freedom. Whether you want to live in South Africa, whether you want to send your kid to whatever school you want, whatever university, wherever you want to go on holiday, no matter what, doesn't matter. All that I would like you to do and like you to have is the freedom so that you can make whatever choice you want. And that is why we are so passionate about helping people invest with confidence and create global wealth. So really from my side, you know, Gerard said that we'll speak again in six months. That's perfect. Please follow us on the webinars. We do at least one, if not two or three webinars a month on different topics. We've interviewed everyone from Clem Sunter to John D. Martini to J.D. Fox, you name it, the, the celebrities, Adolph DeRus. So we, we're always trying to add value. So to those of you who are interested, we can, we can continue and, and, and keep giving you information. To all of you for being online tonight, it's great to have so many of you online. I really want to thank Just Invest for, for putting this together and letting people know about it. I hope that we've added value to you. And most importantly, just take five minutes after this webinar to think about what you need to do to be able to have that freedom in the future for you and your family. I want to thank you so much tonight. It's been an honor and a privilege. I look forward to helping you in the future. To those of you who've asked for more information, we'll be getting contact with you in the next 24 hours. I really hope that we see some of you on our bias trip because really, ladies and gentlemen, I can't tell you what an amazing experience it is. Every single person that comes on the buyer's trip absolutely raves about it. Most of them want to come back. And um, really, I would, I would really say, I know it's a short amount of time to prepare, but uh, you know, find out about it. Come with us on the trip. And if you can't, well, definitely come next year. And if you want to take advantage of the opportunity, you know, give us some mandate and we'll be ears and eyes on the ground. So thank you all very much. Have a wonderful evening. We'll see you soon. And I look forward to helping you. Cheers.